What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are on part three of our series of the SSI React Right program. And as I stated in the other two videos, this is a great program for both divers and non-divers because the techniques and the tricks that you're going to learn throughout the React Right program is going to apply to even outside of the diving world. So whether you're on a dive boat and you witness an injury or or you're just rolling up on a local car wreck, you can actually assist patients and victims and hopefully save their life as well. In part three of this series, of course, we're going to look at the AED, the Automated External Defibrillator. We're going to show you just how easy they are to use, but we're going to talk about some of the safety concerns that you should worry about when you're using it to help protect yourself as well. So the AED, or the Automated External Defibrillator, that is basically that little box that shocks a person when they don't have a heartbeat. And the great thing about these, they are super simple to use. You basically set it and forget it. And if you remember the old rotisserie, uh, say, info commercials where the guy says you set it and forget it, well, in short, that's basically what you're going to do with an AED. You're going to basically turn the unit on, apply the pads where it shows you to apply, and then you're going to hit the start button. And it's going to basically do everything for you. It's going to test for a heart rhythm. It's also going to tell you whether you can continue CPR or if you need to actually apply a shock. Now, one of the concerns, of course, is making sure you're not touching the patient if you do have to apply a shock. That shock can go clean through the patient into you, and then, of course, it's going to be an even worse day if that actually occurs. But the great thing is it actually gives you voice commands. So it's going to walk you through the procedure of how to use the unit, how to turn it on, how to apply it to the patient, and even when to apply a shock to the patient as well. Now, where can we find an AED? There's a lot of businesses that actually have them, say, in a first aid area. A lot of churches and schools have them. Even a lot of local dive shops are going to have them. However, you may not actually find one out when you're on a dive boat. They can be dangerous to use on a dive boat, especially if everybody's wet. Maybe there's puddles of water on the boat. That's just something you're going to have to ask your local charter. Is there an AED available? Now, they do make several AED trainers that you can actually practice with. So if you don't have an actual unit, and we probably shouldn't be practices with one of the actual units, but there are several AED trainers that you can actually download on your iOS or your Android device. Now, the one that I use, this is what I use for students during class. It's a super simple device that you basically set it and forget it. You turn the unit on, it walks you through, and it's a great way for you to practice these life-saving skills, even in, say, a non-life-threatening situation. So guys, that's going to do it for part three of our series of the SSI React Right program. We really hope this series helps you out in preparing to take your final exam for the React Right course. Once again, this is a great course to take, even if you are a non-diver, because you can use the same uh, skills and techniques and tricks that, say, a diver is going to use to, say, a non-diving patient. Maybe you roll up on a car wreck or you witness an injury or an illness, say, at your local grocery store. You can use the same techniques that your SSI React Right instructor is going to teach you in the real world even outside of the diving world. But guys, that's going to do it for part three. Stay tuned for part four, where we talk about respiratory arrest and, of course, drownings as well. If you got any questions on this video, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can and as best as I can as well. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.